In this video, we are talking about the five most expensive neighborhoods in Kitsap County and where they're located, so stay tuned. What's up everybody, it's Cassandra Lopez with the Living in Bremerton channel. If you're new to the channel, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and subscribe. This channel is all about living in Bremerton. So whether you're moving here for the first time or maybe you're already here, just wanna know a little bit more, be sure to hit subscribe, tap that little bell so you're notified every time I drop a new video. And you can reach out to me directly. This is my cell phone and my email. Be sure to reach out if there's anything I can do to support your relocation in Bremerton, Washington. Okay, so this is a bird's eye view of Kitsap County. So it's this whole peninsula right here. Not quite an island because it is connected right here in the Belfair area by this little isthmus. Let's uh, take that last part out. It is connected right here by this little piece of land. And as you can see, it's just tons and tons of shoreline. We have an island here. We have tons of little micro peninsulas and all kinds of good stuff. So Bainbridge Island being top of our list for most affluent communities in Kitsap County. So it is on the east side of Kitsap, and as you can see, it's a direct shot to Seattle right here. Bainbridge Island is 28 square miles, but it has 53 linear miles of shoreline. So just let that sink in for a minute. Tons of shoreline, and also, like, it's hard to tell on this just aerial map right here, but a lot of the shoreline slopes down to the water. So, you know, you'll be up on a hill in in, on the interior and then it slopes down to the shoreline. So not a whole lot of high bank. There's some high bank up here by the bridge and uh, which is nice. So I'll kind of show you a photo. Let's see. Da, da, da. Oh, that's the theory. There we go. Okay. So editor, let's edit out all that last little scrolling of videos of photos that I just did. Of course, before I was able to have all these pop up of the Agate Pass Bridge. And now I can't find any. Okay, I didn't Nope. So here's kind of a view of the Agate Pass Bridge. To the left here is uh, Bay Bridge, and then over here is Polso. So this is on the west side, this is on the east side. So we're kind of looking at it backwards, just scrolling through some of the many shoreline photos. There's another view of the bridge. So this bridge was just recently, it wasn't redone, it was just thoroughly maintained. The <laughs> There was quite a bit of road construction going on for a while. Here's a good one. So over here is Polso, over here is Bainbridge. So you can see on the Polsbo side, it's more of like a high bank situation. There's a little bit of low and no bank right here. Over on the Bainbridge side, it is very beachy and very low bank. And as you can see, the properties are scattered. So there's a few down here, but there's going to be a lot more up here. So if, if it isn't waterfront, it's going to be at the very least water view, which is super nice. And that's kind of all over Bainbridge. That's not, you know, exclusive to just the Agate Pass bridge area. So, you know, according to statistics, Bainbridge Island has a lot of highly educated residents, a lot of white collar wage earners, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of residents live on the island, but commute to Seattle via ferry. So the ferry terminal is right here. It's about halfway down the island on the east side, and it's about a 35 minute commute to Seattle. So, I mean, super easy. It sure beats living over in Seattle and paying all those high Seattle cost of living, you know, housing costs, and then still having to commute for an hour in gridlock. So you get to live over here. Cost of living is a little bit lower, even though Bainbridge Island is one of the more affluent communities. Um, it's still lower than Seattle. A lot of generational families have property here meaning like it's been passed down from generation to generation and has just kind of remained in the family property taxes tend to be really high here i think one of the cons taxes and inflation and all that stuff going up is that property taxes tend to follow all of that and so you know families who have owned properties for years and years and years decades and generations are you know they own their properties free and clear with no mortgages or anything but they can't pay their property taxes because, you know, maybe they're on fixed incomes and the property taxes are just too high. So they're having to sell or something like that because they just can't afford the taxes anymore, which is super sad. 
Uh, doesn't happen, you know, very often. It's not like that's the norm for sure, but it does happen. But I'm sure there's, you know, lots of areas around where that's taking place just because of the hiking property taxes. So um, average price point right now for a residential home is 1.11 million. So that's average. So I know there's a couple that sit on here for 8.9, I think, is the highest one. You know, I see properties go on the market regularly in, you know, the 2 to $5 million range. So it's definitely not uh, unheard of. And then some of the properties on the interior along here, maybe along the 305, that don't have water view or water access. These are going to be your more conservatively priced properties or conservatively valued properties. A lot large lots up here. So uh, aside from like the condos and the and the small HOA style communities, there's going to be well, the acreage. You know, it's not uncommon for most properties to be half or three quarter or an acre or more. Um, there's a couple of farmsteads up on Bay Bridge and stuff like that. So larger lots, um, especially if you're going to the waterfront, because a lot of the lots go out into the water. So that counts towards the property size. And if your lot is waterfront and it goes out into the water, and this is anywhere in Kitsap, it will mean you can, you know, drop a buoy out there or moor your boat out there because it's still on your property or build a dock. So that's super cool when when homeowners build docks. Those are pretty valuable. So, you know, a lot of reasons why Bainbridge Island is, you know, one of the most affluent communities in Kitsap County. Okay, so next on our list of affluent communities in Kitsap County is Indianola. So Indianola is this little gray band right here. Um, Indianola is super interesting. It has a lot of history in regard to the Native American cultures around here, passed down through generations, changed families and bloodlines and that sort of thing because of people dying without heirs and all that stuff. So anyway, um, Indianola is really small, but don't let it fool you. It's got some of the most gorgeous waterfronts. So see how most of it is southern facing. So you can see all these views over here in Shoreline and Seattle, Ballard and stuff. And since it's southern facing, you might have views of Mount Rainier, which is right about here-ish. Well, actually over here, down this way. So from Kitsap County, Mount Rainier is a southeasterly uh, viewpoint. So Indianola, home to the world famous Indianola Sand Spit, this little lovely right here, has some of the most beautiful homes. Obviously, you can see it's a little peninsula. So we have like a full on wraparound housing. Let me pull up a photo real quick. Okay, so here is a photo of the Indianola Sand Spit. So as you can see, I mean, just totally built out. Almost every single home is waterfront. So along this line, this is the south edge here. This is the north facing edge here. So this this little water body of water is this inlet right here. Looks like a whale tail almost. And then obviously these southern facing ones. So the thing with Indianola is that it's got such a low turnover that it really skews the data. Like for example, all of the homes that sold in July of 2020, there was one home in July of 2020 that sold in Indianola and it sold for $290,000. So it looks like the average price point for that month is $290,000, which is not the case. <laughs> so the price points along the southern shore, I mean, they sell for well into the seven figures. So the but the turnover is really low. And so, you know, they don't sell as often. The demographic here in Indianola is highly uh, retirement aged folks. And so you know, people kind of move in for their retirement years and then they just kind of, you know, don't move out type of thing because they love it so much. So, you know, that that's part of the reason for the, the low turnover. There are other areas in Kitsap County, like Manette, it's a neighborhood in Bremerton, that also has a really low turnover, which isn't a retirement community. People just really like it. So, you know, it's just a uh, personal preference. Okay, third on our list for most affluent communities in Kitsap County is Chico. Chico is actually a neighborhood in Bremerton. It's right here, as you can see. So if we scroll in, so we have West Bremerton here. Actually, this whole thing is West Bremerton. We have East Bremerton, um, Chico is this little eastern facing waterfront community. You can see Chico Way running parallel to Highway 3. Chico also goes up here a little bit. Um, this is a huge hill. 
I know you can't see it from the topography of this little 2D map, but this is a huge hill up here. And so a lot of views, Eastern Basin views, uh, Chico itself. So all of these properties on the waterfront side, they all have eastern facing views. So this is Dive Inlet. You have the most magnificent front row seats to the 4th of July fireworks that take place in Silverdale. They go off a of pier right up here at the very top. You have some fabulous sunrises with views of Mount Rainier. Here, I'm going to pull up a photo and show that to you. This is an image of a sunrise in Chico, Washington, facing southeast towards Mount Rainier. So just stunning, gorgeous pink sunrise. And this is kind of the norm, unless it's like, you know, totally rainy, a little miserable, which it is oftentimes uh, during the winter and spring months around here. It gets pretty darn soggy. But um, I mean, honestly, you guys, look at that. That's stunning. So that is all through here. So Chico, Washington. So because of that, we have, you know, a pretty decent price point. All this waterfront. Sometimes it's acreage on waterfront. Um, sometimes it's not. But hey, that's okay. You know, it is what it is. So on the other side of the road here, on the west side of the road, all these guys are going to be water view. So not waterfront, but water view. Still having, you know, advantage of those spectacular views. So as you can see, Chico is smack dab in between Silverdale and uh, Bremerton proper. So this is like the west of West Bremerton and Bremerton downtown over here. So literally five minutes in either direction and you're either in Silverdale or you're in Bremerton and it has a freeway on ramp right in the middle right here. So that's kind of cool. You just get on the freeway right there and then uh, go about your business. So up here, up this hill, remember how I mentioned this is a hill? This is Newberry Hill. So up here, here at the top of the hill. I wonder if, if I added. I eh, can't really see that either. Up here is still considered the Chico area. And a lot of these properties also have western facing views because it is at the top of the hill. So sometimes you'll be you know, more on the Chico side and you have views of Mount Rainier. And then sometimes you'll be more the Seabeck side because this is all Seabeck out here. And then you'll have views of the Olympic mountains and all that jazz. But I mean, really you can't go wrong. You're kind of spoiled if you live around here. Just some great properties, some great opportunities for some beautiful sunsets, sunrises. Because this is all Easter facing, you have really cool evenings. You get that nice breeze off the inlet that really is just really really gorgeous okay so our fourth most affluent community in chisup county is Hansville. so Hansville is right here it is the northernmost point in chisup county all of this over here to the west of the hood canal bridge is jefferson county and up here is whidbey island this is island county and over here this is the east side this is king county um, and snohomish county so a lot of counties all in a <laughs> small 20 mile radius there so anyhow pansville um like indianola it is a very low turnover so people move in and they don't want to move out they love it one maybe con would be that it's kind of remote it's pretty out there so i mean you can see it's all the way up the peninsula uh, it takes about 30 minutes to get here from anywhere so the key the signature neighborhood in hansville is called driftwood key it's this little flat right here in the middle um, Driftwood Key is really cool. It has, you know, a private boat marina. It has all these great features and amenities for residents that are accessible to residents only. A lot of the properties here have views of the Hood Canal Bridge, which is here. I'm about pulling up a picture so you can find one here. Here we go. That's the Hood Canal Bridge. So the Hood Canal Bridge is a drawbridge. It doesn't draw up, it draws back. So it slides back on itself and it opens when uh, merchant marine vessels need to come through or Navy vessels need to come through. So it is on contract with the Navy to pretty much open. So what that means is that when this bridge opens, traffic going eastbound from Jefferson County and traffic going westbound from Kitsap County are all at a complete standstill. So it is kind of common to have this Highway 3 right here backed up for, I mean, it could be a couple of miles. Sometimes the bridge is open for like an hour. 
And so people literally just park their cars on the freeway and turn off their engines and get out. There's nothing you can do. You got to wait for the bridge to close so people can start passing. Anyway, so that is, you know, Hansville isn't really going to be affected by that. You'll be more affected by that if you, you know, commute across the Hoopinaw Bridge frequently. But Hansville just to get to take advantage of the views and it gets to take advantage of watching the submarines uh, sail by, which is a pretty astonishing sight. It's pretty cool. So being this you know, little peninsula up here that looks almost like a seahorse. You get perspectives on all sides from all directions of all waterfront, right? Except for maybe not southern facing, right? But you have western facing here. So the west side is going to have views, stunning panoramic views of the Olympic Mountains on the western facing. Northern facing, you're going to have views of the islands up here, Maristone Island and Whidbey Island and the passage. And then eastern facing, you have a little bit the island, maybe a little bit of of Mount Rainier, depending on if you're kind of up on a hill in this location. Okay, back to our full county overview. The last area we're going to talk about in the mo most affluent uh, communities in Kids Up is surprisingly Olala. So maybe not one that you would really think of as an affluent community. Here's Olala. And as you can see, this is the only one we've talked about so far in South Kitsa. So if we scroll back, so Bremerton's right in the center here. Here's Bremerton, if you can see like the little moose head. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> so here's the moose head, here's the antlers, right? So that is kind of the, the heart center of Kitsap County is right here, this new set. And then we have East Bremerton, East Central Kitsap, Silverdale, all the way up to Hansville and Bainbridge that we talked about before. But now we're going south into South Kitsap. So why is Olala such an affluent community? Well, it's because Olala has ton horse, equestrian, and livestock style properties. So we're talking acreage, we're talking fully cross fence, we're talking paddocks and arenas and stables and all kinds of stuff that is already built in, ready to go for your horses. And if you've ever owned horses, you, you know that they're expensive animals to buy and to take care of. And, um, you know, the families just that own them just need to have the resources to do that. So another thing about a lot of is that a lot of the property down here is a little flatter and it's platted um, a lot. Uh, oftentimes it'll be like in a perfect square or rectangle. So it's super easy to define and uh, mark your boundaries. It also, as you can see, has a nice little eastern facing waterfront here. This is all kind of hyping. So, you know, oftentimes you're not really going to get down to the beach uh, directly from the property. There may be a couple of trails built in or maybe some switchbacks or something like that. That would be really nice. Um, this is Colvo's Passage. And so then you have a view of Bashan Island. Just south, Olala is Gate Harbor right here, which is an incredibly affluent community in Pierce County. The, uh, the county line is right about here. You see these two roads right here. In fact, this one over here, let's see, maybe that isn't it. it is Gateway Park, I know that's Pierce County. Now I'm on a mission to find fine I think it's the Parkview Terrace, that's Port Orchard, Oak Street, bear with me, Bruce Road, that's Pierce County, or I'm sorry, that's Kitsap County, that's Bremerton, the Horse Riding Academy. <laughs> well, now I can't find it now that you're watching. So there is a road that is called literally County Line Road, and it is on the county divide of Kitsap and Pierce County. So suffice it to say, right about where this road is right here. So see how close Olala is. It's the southernmost part of um, Kitsap County, um, and then you head into Gig Harbor. So anyhow, so lots of horse property, lots of livestock property. Um, people own just like acres and dozens and dozens of acres out here just to take care of all of that. So that is why Olala made our top five list of most affluent communities in Kitsap County. If you liked that video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, tap that little bell so you're notified every time I drop a new one. And if you know anybody who you think might benefit from this, feel free to share and don't forget to reach out, text, call, or email if there's anything I can do to support you. Bye for now.